Hey ladies, happy Wednesday. I'm excited to be with you today and talk about one of my favorite topics, which is sales calls. And I know it's everyone's favorite thing to do. Uh, one of the things that I, I think scares a lot of people as we're getting started as a coach. Um, so it's something I wanna talk about because it's such an important part of the process. Um, and if you hop on, say hello. Um, let me know who's who's watching. And yeah, today is going to be a great topic. And I'm really excited at the moment because I just heard back that um, a place that I found in Boulder, Colorado this, this summer that I'm going to go and stay in for a while um, is going to work out for me for me to stay there. So I'm going to be heading out to the mountains a little later this summer in July, August, and I don't know how long I'm going to stay. But um, so that's, I just found out that, that today. So I'm excited about that. Um, hey, Allie, I'm excited you're here. Um, so, so I'm going to be talking about sales calls. I, I want to give you guys some tips. And I think it's, it's an important part of the process that a lot of times we, we kind of forget about. Like we get so caught up in trying to build our community and actually book the sales calls that we don't spend much time thinking about the actual process of having sales calls or consultations, discovery calls, clarity calls, whatever you want to call them. They're all the same thing. Um, but it's if you go through all the work of building a community and getting people to book the calls and then you don't know how to have good calls with people, you end up putting in a lot of work and you can and then you lose that potential client. That doesn't mean that all calls are gonna result in clients like we all have people that are going to say yes and no no matter you know how good you are at doing calls and how long you've been doing it um, and that's okay but we want to really learn how to do them in the very best way so that we feel confident and comfortable doing them and so that we're really getting as many clients as as we can because that means more people that you're able to help so i want to talk about that today i want to talk about where people get stuck and some things you can do that really help you do calls that are more effective Hey Jenny, glad you're here. Um, so where a lot of people get stuck when it comes to calls is that the number one thing is probably being really afraid of coming across as salesy or pushy. Um, I hear this all the time. Like, you know, what if people think I'm salesy? What if people think I'm pushy? What if I'm making people feel uncomfortable? Um, and a lot of times I think this comes from our own experience of maybe being in that situation where we were being sold to in a way that felt really uncomfortable. Um, and we never wanna make anyone else feel that way, especially since a lot of us, a lot of people I work with, like we're a little more sensitive and empathetic. So I think we really um, are more aware of not wanting to make other people feel that way, which is good and you don't have to. Um, but that's a lot of times one of the biggest things I think that I hear from people and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, what if, what if someone thinks I'm, I'm salesy or pushy? So I'm gonna show you how to have sales calls in a way that do not ever feel salesy and pushy. And I, I never feel that way in, in my calls, I really don't. Um, so, so there's some things you can do that really allow you to have calls that are really effective without coming across that way. Hey April, so glad you're here. And back from sunny Arizona. I'm sure you're loving the cooler weather. Um, so, what another thing that people get afraid of is is not saying the right thing so what if i get on a call and i don't know how to like answer a question or i don't know how to say you know answer something that someone's asking me or i just don't say the right thing or i, I sound like i don't know what i'm talking about those different types of things um you know just being afraid of getting a no from people that can stop you from wanting to get on a sales call you know like what if someone says no what if they don't want to work with me um so these are some of the the most common things um, <laughs> April misses Arizona already. Yeah, I understand. We still have snow here in Wisconsin, so it, it's almost melted, but, um, it's been, it's been a long, a long winter and we're ready for spring. Um, so, so what happens when this is going on? So when you're, when you're scared of doing the sales calls, what, what's going to happen is a lot of times we'll get stuck in procrastination. So we'll be doing things that hold us back from actually putting ourselves out there and being able to get clients. Um, so doing things like working on your website forever or um, you know, making programs that you don't have anyone to buy and um, you know, doing a lot of marketing that's kind of 
behind the scenes, um, but isn't necessarily really connecting you with other people and speaking with those other people. So that's a lot of times when we're scared about the sales calls, we, we end up really holding ourselves back and not putting ourselves out there fully. Um, and obviously that's going to result in you not getting clients. And spending a lot of time maybe working in your business without getting any clients, which is exhausting and frustrating. Um, and so we don't want you to get stuck in that trap. Um, so let me just see, I had some, some things I wanted to make sure I cover. So one of the biggest things that I think is important to remember when it comes to sales call, sales calls is that a lot of it is mindset work and your ability to be effective and have good sales calls is so much based on our own mindset. Um, and so if you think about it, like everything is, is energy. And so if we are putting out energy that we want clients and we want that income coming in, but at the same time we're putting out energy that we're scared of sales calls, that we don't feel confident in our offer, um, that we might not know the right thing to say, um, and that we're scared of getting a no, we're putting out conflicting energy. And so even if we are booking calls, a lot of times we're going to be getting a lot of no's, we're going to be getting a lot of resistance from people, um, the calls probably won't be going really well. So we want to work through those things. Um, Priscilla's in Colorado, yes, I'm going to be coming out that way. We'll have to see if we can connect while I'm out there. Are you in the Denver area? I'm trying to remember. I think I saw. Um, but that would be awesome. So so really looking at these, um, the conflicting energy that we have around wanting clients, wanting um, you know that income coming in, but at the same time being scared of the sales calls or being scared of not delivering on our results, you know, those different things. We want to clear that up so that um, we're giving aligned energy as far as really going towards wanting those clients and wanting that income. So we really want to look at if there are like big fears um, coming up, like can we address those? What are they around? Um, so that we can really uh, get your energy aligned with allowing you to get people scheduling calls and uh, coming on the calls and being willing and ready to work with you and saying yes. So when the energy is all aligned, like that stuff works so much better. Um, so what I want to do is give you some steps to help make sure that 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 everything is aligned and that you're giving that you're holding the most effective and powerful sales calls. Um, and then if you find yourself like that, you're getting stuck on certain areas or that you find that you have like a certain fear that's popping up a lot. Um, it's good to to address that or see you know what's going on there. Is it around the money? Is it around um, you know what I'm saying? Is it around my belief in my offer? Um, and really looking at that so that you can address it um, because otherwise you just end up frustrated. And the thing is like when these things are on point, um, the, the sales calls can really flow really easily um, and and be, become fun. Like I enjoy them a lot. I always look at it as a way to really get to know people and um, you know see how I can serve them the very best, whether that's working with me or something else. Um, and I'm not totally attached to to the outcome of that. Um, hey Lisa, glad you're here too. Uh, Lisa's here in Wisconsin with me too. So we have hot weather today, like in the 40s. <laughs> maybe up to 50s. So um, so I want to give you some steps. I'm going to run through them. If I have any, if you guys have any questions as I'm going, you know, pop them in the, the chat and let me know. Um, but I have five, oh no, I have seven, seven main things. <laughs> I thought it was five um, that I want to talk about when it comes to sales calls and the things that are going to really help you do them in a way that's most powerful, most effective. Um, so going through number one, ideal client. I bring this up every time. It's it's just so important. Um, so you want to know who it is that you're serving um, because when you do, you can get on that call and really serve those people more powerfully because you can be prepared. You know, you know what they're struggling with, what it is that they want. Um, and the thing is too, when, when you're um, putting your marketing out in front of your ideal client, you're getting people who are the people you're meant to be working with and you want to be working with and the people who are ready to start making some changes and they're looking for what it is that you have to offer. So it, what happens is then you are having calls with people who 
are excited about what you're talking about. They're already ready and motivated to make these changes. And so it's more about you making sure that what you have is a good fit and that you're a good fit to work with them as opposed to trying to convince these people that they need to do your program or that they need to make changes or that they need to start being healthier. Like you never want to be in that spot where you're trying to convince people. You're looking for the people who are already out there searching for what you have to offer. So when you know your ideal client, you can get in front of those people or we can set up a plan to get you in front of those people. That's a lot of what I help people do with, with the marketing. Um, but then you're having calls with people who are ready your ideal client. They're already looking for what you have to offer. So that just in itself makes everything flow a lot easier too. Um, so number two then is, is getting really clear on what your offer is. So once you know who your ideal client is going through and actually getting clear, like, how am I going to be working with these people? Um, you know, what is it that we're going to be going through, through the process? And I think once you get a clear idea of what your program is and the results that you are going to offer through that program, you feel a lot more confident um, when you're talking to people about what it is that you do and what you can help them do and what results you can help them get. So I find that that's really important and it makes your sales calls so much better as well because you come with this confidence about being able to serve them as opposed to coming from a place of of feeling not confident and not sure and being like, oh my gosh, if I get this client, can I really help them? Um, and of course, like maybe you can help everyone and then you just let those people know, like, you know, my program isn't the best fit for you. But for those people who are your ideal client, your program is gonna be the best fit for them and you gotta let them know that. Um, so so go through, get really clear on what your, what your program offer is and it's gonna really help with your clarity calls. Um, so, one of the main points of our clarity call is to get people to um, see that's, that it's important for them to take action now. Um, and so like I said, it, it isn't necessarily to convince them that they need to make a change. Um, most of the people that we're going to be getting on calls when you set your marketing up to get in front of your ideal client, they already know that they need to make a change and they want to make those changes, but they might be procrastinating. Um, so the point of the call, one of the biggest points is to show them how big of a, um, how big of an impact this problem is having on their life and that it is really important for them to take action now as opposed to keep putting it off and keep waiting and keep procrastinating and keep thinking, you know, maybe it's going to change on its own. Um, you know, we want to show them like you, by working together, we can help you change this now. You don't have to keep waiting. Um, and so I think that's important to know too um, about about the call, and it's it's about them seeing that themselves. Um, so when you when you walk them through the call, you can and you and you follow the certain steps, um, you really can allow them to see like yes, this is something I need to change, and I need to change now because it's having a huge impact on my life. Um, so then the other part. Um, so number one, like they're getting clear on, on how big of an impact it's having in their life and that they need to make changes now. Then the second thing is allowing them to see where they, where it is that they want to go. Um, what is possible for them, helping them get into that vision and the excitement of that. Um, that is really going to help motivate people to make changes as well. Um, and it's, and by doing these different steps, like none of it is salesy. All it is is laying out the pos the possibilities of what what they could do, what is possible for them if they make these changes. Um, so it's really a cool process. Um, it's really powerful, and um, and people get so much out of it, really. Um, so so don't think about it as being as being salesy or pushy in any way. Um, so so after you get them clear on what's possible for them then you want to let them know how your program can help them get unstuck and moving towards those results that they want. Um, and I think it really helps to be specific about your how your program and you working with them is going to help them specifically with where they're stuck. Um, the more clear you can get about that, the better they're going to see like, oh yeah, like your program is awesome. Like it's exactly what I need, exactly what is going to help me move forward. Um, and so 
when you can talk to them about that. And that's the difference too between someone just like seeing your program written on a piece of paper versus you talking to them about it and about how your program specifically is going to help them with where they're stuck. It makes a huge, huge difference. It doesn't require being salesy or pushy. It requires just being really specific and, and catering your call towards that, towards your client and what they're getting stuck with. Um, so then the next part, number six, so that was number five, number six, is the price. So um, a lot of times talk about pricing. I have another video where I went into pricing, but you want your price to feel good to you um, and you don't want it to be something that's like way too high and you feel like you're uncomfortable with the price point. Um, you also don't want something to be way too low because then you're not gonna really wanna even take on that client because you're like, it isn't even really worth my time. Like I'm putting in way more effort than the, the amount of money that I'm getting in return. So you want it to really be that even exchange um, of a price that you feel comfortable and confident in, but being like a little bit of a stretch so that it isn't like you feel like you're, you're doing all this work and you're not getting compensated um, evenly because that isn't gonna feel right either and then you're gonna be putting out energy that is not aligned. So finding that good price point that's in kind of that sweet spot is really, really important. Um, and you can always write, raise your prices as you go. You can change it at any time. So don't feel like, you know, I picked this price point and I'm stuck there forever. Um, that's not the case. So then the last piece is being willing to work through resistance with people. So most people are gonna have some sort of resistance that shows up on a sales call, whether it's around the price, whether it's around, um, you know, do I have the time to do this? Will it really work for me? Um, you know, what I have to check with my spouse or, you know, it won't work because of my kids or whatever that, that resistance is. Um, for a lot of people, it's going to pop up. Money is the most um, common one um, or timing sometimes or not having the time. Those are probably the most common, money being the number one. So you want to be willing to walk with people through the resistance. Um, you don't want this resistance to come up and you to be just like, oh, okay, fine. You know, that's fine. Like we won't work together or whatever. Um, you don't have to be pushy about it, but you want to help them see like, um, you know, what is that resistance about for them and let them s show them as well, like how important it is for them to make this happen, um, and how much it's going to impact them if they don't, like what's going to happen if you, if you don't do this and you just keep doing what you're doing, you're probably gonna be stuck in the exact same spot because if you had been able to do it on your own, you would have done it by now. So you just wanna allow them to see this so that they can see the reality of the situation. Isn't it about being salesy or pushy, it's just about showing them the truth. And then when they see that clearly, they can see like, oh yeah, like um, this does make sense for me to invest in it, even if it does feel a little uncomfortable to be spending this money towards it, like it's worth the investment. So be willing to go there with people, be willing to show them you know, if they aren't sure how to come up with the money, um, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll speak with my clients about that. Like, is there options? You know, do you have a credit card you can put on, um, borrow money from someone? Like, there's, there's always different options. So just when that resistance comes up, don't go running the other way or don't just be like, fine, no. Um, just be willing to go there with your client. Not being salesy or pushy, but from a place of curiosity and from a place of truly wanting to serve them and help them. Um, and so seeing if there is a way that you can make it possible. So I think these things all make your sales calls go so much smoother. None of it is salesy or pushy. Like I said, I never feel that way on my calls. Um, it's truly only coming from a place of wanting to serve my clients in the uh, highest way. And so I want to let them know, like, you know, this is what I can do that could help you. And if it's a good fit and they really want to do it, then helping them figure out how they can make it happen. And if it's not a good fit, like, that's fine too. And then I, I just send them, you know, in the right direction, maybe to someone else that could help them, or if they need more training or something before we work together, I give them those resources or, or give them recommendations. So, so that's really how I do my calls and how I teach my clients to do calls. Um, you know, I actually have a script that I give people and walk them through things step by step. There's, you know, a lot of training that goes into it. I think knowing that your calls are going to be um, a skill that you need to practice and learn, you're not going to ace them like right off the bat. Um, so, so being okay with that and just knowing like the more you do them, the better you're going to get at them. 
um, that really helps as well. And you learn from each one. Each one you can you can after the call be like, okay, what went well? What do I still need to work on? Um, and then from there you you go to the next call and you make it even better. Um, Lisa was saying that's what just happened to her and she learned from it though. Yeah, as long as you're learning from your calls, like that's the best thing. And I, I mean, I'm always still learning from my calls. Um, each time I get done with a call, I'm like, okay, what went really awesome? What didn't go so good? What can I do better next time? And then I take that into my next call. So, so don't take each call as like, oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. Like it's, it's just, it's practice. The more you do them, the better you get. Um, you know, I've gone through periods where I got tons of no's in a, in, in a row and I just had to look at it and kind of see like, you know, what, what might maybe was off as far as what I was doing or what in my own energy wasn't aligned. Um, so maybe it was something I was believing around money, um, or, you know, something on timing in my own life. And I just had to look at that and kind of see what was going on that was, um, resulting in all these calls kind of giving me the same answer. So um, it's really kind of a cool process when you allow it to just be a process and be okay with it. Um, but there's a lot you can do as far as making the calls really flow well and having a good structure to them so that your calls do lead to clients um, in, in the best way possible and the least like, um, I'd say like awkward way, like there's really a great way you can take people through this process and it just feels really good. Um, and people get a lot out of it. A lot of times I hear people say like, oh my gosh, I, I learned so much and I'm so much more clear just from this call. And that's, that's really awesome too. Ali's saying hallelujah for the script. Yeah, definitely. Like a script really, really helps. Um, it's a huge part of the process. And even now, sometimes I'll, I'll have my script, you know, I have it pretty much down and memorized, but um, it can be helpful if you if you get a little flustered or you feel stuck. So let me know if you guys have any questions specifically about doing calls or anywhere that you guys find that you get stuck. I'm I'm happy to answer them. Um, but you know if it's some it's a, if it's something that you feel like you really struggle with, um, you know let me know. Reach out to me um, because I really have a good a good process as far as taking people through the sales calls. Um, but I think it's important to know that everything leading up to the sales call is really important to have in place too so that you're actually having those calls with your ideal clients because that makes a huge difference as far as how the calls go as well. So when you look at your business, it's really the whole picture and making sure like everything is working well together, the sales calls being one really important piece of the, the puzzle. Um, but it's really, it's really the whole thing is going to make everything run a lot smoother. Um, so Lisa's asking, do I have an app or something we could use to record the calls and reflect back on them later? Yeah, I actually did when when I did a training on sales on on sales calls, I I did record some. Um you do need to let people know that you are recording them when you record them. So you just have to say, you know, I is it okay if I record this call? Um, legally you are you are required to do that so just know that if you want to record calls um, let me find the one that I had it's actually an app on my phone so I'll look it up and I'll let you know I think I might have it on my old phone so I'm gonna have to see what it was called but it worked really well but yeah just make sure that you get permission before you record calls because you you're supposed to do that um, April saying she has to have a chat with me about sales calls I'm guessing perhaps um, but yeah, just send me a message and we'll look at that, figure it out. So let me know if you guys have any other questions. Lisa's questions is a great one. Like actually recording your calls can be really helpful. Um, so if you are new and you're wanting to work on your calls, um, that can actually be a really good option. But like I said, just, just make sure you get permission and you can just say, um, you know, I'm, I'm working on my sales calls or, you know, for, record purposes I record all my calls is that okay with you you know something along those lines um, you know most people are gonna say like yeah no problem and if they say no then just don't record it that's fine um, but it can be a really great way to to work on your sales calls the other thing I would say is just like for me and with my clients I think it's really helpful for 
them to let me know where they're getting stuck and we can work through it and see what's going on too. So to get like an outside opinion sometimes can be really helpful if you find that you're really getting stuck with certain things because sometimes it's things that you're not seeing. Um, so I know even for me, like when I was working on sales calls, like it was helpful for me to be like, you know, this is how the call went. This is where I felt like I got stuck or what didn't go that well. Um, and to get some feedback on what I could do differently. So I think that's really helpful too. So let me know if you guys have any other questions at all about, about sales calls, um, or anything else, um, that's coming up for you. And I'm happy to answer them. Uh, if you watch the replay, feel free to ask questions in there as well. And like I said, if you feel like you're getting stuck on your sales calls, let me know. Like I'm happy to help direct you in the right way and see, you know, where where you really are getting stuck. Like maybe it is in the actual sales call process, but maybe you're not even getting the right clients to get on the calls in the first place, which is going to make the sales calls not go well either. So you just want to look at the whole picture and, and see what's going on there. Um, so like I said, if, you, if you're feeling stuck, let me know. Um, and otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap up if no one else has any other questions. Um, so if you think of anything later, let me know. And Lisa, I'll get that app to you and let you know what that's called too. So I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your Wednesday. And thank you everyone who joined me live. I always appreciate having, having some interaction. It makes the calls more fun. So um, good luck with all your sales calls. I know you guys are going to rock them. Let them be a practice. It's okay. And you don't have to be perfect at them. The more you do them, the easier they will get um, and the more they'll flow. Lisa, you're so welcome. Um, Priscilla wants to know the app too. I'll actually, I'll post it in the, in the comments. I'll post the app. So I'm just going to look it up and I'll post it to you. Um, and it's just an app you can download on your phone. And it's, I, I think I paid for it, but it wasn't much. So, um, <laughs> my sweater's on fleck. Thank you. I don't even know if I know exactly what that means, but I like it. So thank you. I am still wearing a sweater, but maybe next time you see me, I'll be wearing short sleeves. I won't be holding my breath for that, but it would be nice. So, all right, guys, have an amazing rest of your day, and let me know if you need support with anything, and I'll talk to all of you soon. It means it's cute. Awesome. I figured something like that. I'll have to add that word to my, my vocab. So... All right, guys, um, thanks again for joining me, and I will talk to all of you soon. Bye.